Good morning, children. Today we're going to talk about Pro Tools shortcuts. Know this on the other DOS, they're wonderful, of course, too, but we know Pro Tools very well, so we thought we'd share. Why are shortcuts important? Because everything you can do with your mouse, you can do five to ten times faster with a shortcut. Think of it as touch typing for Pro Tools. You can choose to type with two fingers for the rest of your life, or you can learn to touch type and be much faster and able to focus on what's important. So here we go, our favorite shortcuts. Pro Tools has some pretty powerful zooming shortcuts, which you should have as second nature. There's a lot of them. Here's the one that you're susceptible to use the most. If you have a clip selected and you really want it to be big, option F, and that's huge. Now, if you're lost in your session and you don't really know where you are, then I would say option A for all, and then your entire session is now zoomed fully. So again, option F focuses on what you're working on. Option A gives you a bird's eye view. Between the two of them, you can really know where you are very quickly. That's very nice. Of course, you can also use the traditional ones, command left and right bracket, or R and T, but I think it's very nice to be able to just go, I'm working on this, or I'm seeing the whole song. Very nice. Also, very crucial, check it out. The key command for zoom is command one. And fair enough, you hit it, you see it switch up there, you click, it zooms. You can select a range and it zooms to that range. Fair enough. If you hit option, you can zoom out. Okay, but it goes deeper. Now I can select single zoom. What that does is it turns the tool into a zoom for one click and then switches to back to where you were before. So for example, say if you're in multi-tool and you're doing selections and then you want to focus on this one thing here, you can hit command one, zoom on it, and then you're back in the selection tool without having to switch out of the zoom mode. That is incredibly practical. And of course, if you get lost, you can hit option A to see the whole song, A for all. Pro Tools has interesting ways of displaying waveforms. You actually have two considerations, track height and waveform height, and they're independent. So for track height, you have control up and down arrow, and you can change the track height really quickly. You don't have to use the little menus there. They're slow. Like everything in Pro Tools, if you use the option key, all tracks will follow suit. Very nice. For the waveform height, you can change it by using option, command, left bracket for smaller or right bracket for bigger. Pretty simple. So now, if you made a mess and you do not know where you are, it's easy. You just hit Control, Option, Command, Up Arrow, and Pro Tools will shrink everything down vertically as much as possible to fit everything on the screen. Combine with Option A for the horizontal version, and now you have a bird's eye view in two clicks. So you can really go from here to here in no time at all. If you don't have a control surface or you're working on a keyboard laptop, it's very nice to be able to access all the controls of a track when it's selected. So for example, say if you have this master selected, I hit Shift M for mute, Shift S for solo, Shift R for record, and then if you have Pro Tools HD, Shift I will activate input monitoring. If you do not have Pro Tools HD, Option K will do that, but only if the track is enabled for record. Now, think about it this way. If you combine this with the P key command and the semicolon key command that lets you change the cursor from track to track. Now, say I'm on my main here, I can mute it, and then I can hit P a few times, hit my bass track, and mute it too. I do not have to grab the mouse. Those key commands are P for up and semicolon for down. I suggest you put a little sticker on those because you could use them all the time. Pro Tools has some very extensive grouping features. Here's what you need to know to get started quickly. To create a group, you select the tracks you want to be in the group, hit Command G, and then name the group. Now, if I'm doing drums, Current Wisdom says that I should call the group Drums. Also, if you want to make it easy on yourself, why don't you select the shortcut for the group to be a D, for example, you know, D for drums. So there you go. Now I'm here and I can, without thinking too much, turn my drum group on and off by hitting the D button in my mix window. Very practical. The other thing you need to know is you can suspend all groups by hitting Shift, Command, G. Why is that important? Well, say, for example, you're working up here on the drums and you have your group on. Anything you're going to do is going to select the group. If you just need to select the bass drum for a second, you Shift, Command, G, and now you're just selecting the bass drum and then turn your groups back on and do whatever you want. Practical. For duplication commands, 
Avid has had the good taste of choosing the letter D, and we're grateful for that. So for example, if you need to duplicate a track, you hit Shift, Option, D, and then you have a nice little menu that lets you choose what you want to duplicate. Say you're in the situation where you just track a badass bass line and you want to have a double of that. You can Shift, Option, D it and say, I want everything, sands, groups, assignments, everything, but not the active playlist, so I can track a new track. And there you go, very quick. If you're in the edit window and you like this little bass lick right here, you want to duplicate it, Command D. You want to repeat it many times, Option R, like repeat, say four times, boom, done, very quick. I like to start with a blank slate so I don't have any templates, so I spend a lot of time creating new tracks in Pro Tools. Here's a good way to do that. So with the combination of Shift, Command, N to open the dialog, Command, right arrow and left arrow to select from mono and stereo, and the up and down arrows to select what you want to do, you can really create tracks really quickly. For example, do I want four stereo aux inputs, and then Command plus adds a field, and then I create eight mono audio tracks. Boom, gone. And here they come. Pro Tools has some nice cleaning up key commands and concepts. Check this out. Say I like this bass edit right here, and I want to commit to it. I select it, Shift, Option 3 will consolidate it into one chunk. Now, say I'm happy with this and I want to export it somewhere else to use it elsewhere, maybe in the sampler or archive it. Shift, Command, K will let me export it and give me lots of options on what to do with it. As a way to remember this, if you select any region in Pro Tools, it gets selected in the region window down here, P Base. Then you can go to this menu up here and export region as file. What it does is take this virtual representation of your audio and turn it into a solid file wherever you want on your drive. It's very easy to export stuff out of Pro Tools and keep it tight. Also, in the same category, to clean up the mess left by six months of working on the same song across four systems, to remove all unused file, you can use Shift Command U for unused. You see here on the right hand side in the region bin, all the stuff that's unused. And then you use Shift Command B for, I don't really know what, I call it Blast Off, and you hit Remove. Here's a trick. If you hit Option Remove, it won't ask you every single time all the complicated questions. Do you really want to get rid of this? Do you really want to get rid of this? And this one, do you really want to get rid of this one? How about this one? If you hit Option, it'll just remove everything. Pro Tools is a two-window environment. Don't try and torture it into a one-window environment. It's a waste of time. The key command you need to know is command equal. Doesn't get any faster than that. If you feel that you have too much stuff on the screen here and you want to see more, option command M makes the mixer windows a little smaller so you can have more on the screen at one time. Also, you can open and close sidebars at will just with one click, like this. That's very practical, you can see a lot. Pro Tools lets you see one plugin window at a time by default. Now, if you want to see several, all you have to do is hit Shift. And now you have two or three. Pretty simple. If you're starting to fill up your screen with too many plugin windows, real men do not close their plugin windows with a little button up there. Real men used Option, Command, W, and everything goes away. As far as navigation goes, the way Pro Tools works is it always starts from the same spot unless you tell it not to. It's very practical if you're focusing on one thing. So, for example, this first two beat of this verse. I don't have to relocate every time I want to hear the same thing. It's also very practical if you have people on your couch who don't like what you're mixing, you can do this for five minutes and they'll leave. Works great. If you want to switch back to logic mode, say, where the timeline follows along, hit N, and now it'll work in logic mode. She may be the kind of girl that you and then it moves on from there. On a date, but I guarantee you her mama's gonna tell the big N finger syndrome is also an explanation for this. If you're a heavy duty Pro Tools user and you work fast, you tend to make selections here in the timeline, and then you hit play. She may be the kind then when you hit stop, if you're in logic mode, the selection disappears. It can drive a Pro Tools user batty. So the first thing to do is make sure that your finger is small enough and you don't hit N too much. Here's a good way to think about playback selections and edit selections in Pro Tools. It's a little different from other DAWs. You have a link, timeline, and edit mode. What it means in English 
is that you can select this and Pro Tools will play this if you're in that mode, which is very practical. Now, of course, every time you hit play, it's going to play that. If you disconnect your edit selections and your timeline selections by using shift slash, now you can have this selected, but you can play this instead. There's many applications for this, but what you need to know is that the default mode and the way most people work in Pro Tools is just your selection is what you listen to, unless you decide to do something different. That's a good default mode to work because if you're listening to what you have selected, you always know where you are. Let's talk about automation. The first one you need to know is control minus, which toggles between waveform and volume automation. To be precise, it will let you toggle between anything and waveform and then back to volume automation. So for example, say you have here the high slope control on my Oxford EQ is what I'm automating. Do this so you can see what's going on. All right, if I'm here, I hit control minus, I'm on waveform. I hit control minus again, I'm on volume. Very practical. Another one you need to know is the control command right arrow and left arrow, which lets you switch between all the different automation playlists. Whatever is there will be used much faster than using this menu here because, you know, it's a menu. Also, as always in Pro Tools, anything you do, you can hold option and it will apply to all tracks. Here's a nugget. Say you have this phenomenal, incredibly creative automation pattern right there. That's all great, but it's 2 dB too loud. What are you going to do? Oh my God. All you have to do is select it, select the volume control here in the playlist, take it down to where you want it to be. So we said 2 dBs, I'm going to say minus 6.7, for example, and hit shift, command, slash. Mm. There's a caveat here. If you're on the Mac, make sure you have your keyboard preference pane brought up. Look in here, look to application shortcuts and make sure that the show help menu is deselected. Otherwise, it won't work. For plugin automation, here's how it goes. Hit Control, Option, Command, select the parameter you want to automate, and say Enable Automation for low mid frequencies here. Now, if you want to see that playlist, Control, Command, click on the parameter, and it will switch automatically to that playlist. This, by the way, works for everything. It works for pan too, works for volume, whatever you want. Control, Command, click on whatever you want to automate, brings it there. If you're lazy and want to automate everything, Control, Option, Command, hit this button, and every parameter in the plugin is now automated, which gives you an interesting automation list right here. So if you're automating a reverb, expect a long menu. For those of us who enjoy using Pro Tools on our laptops with the built-in headphones output just because we can, there's two things missing because of the keypad not being there. Loop and punch, at least for me, all the time. You can get to it by Shift-Command-L for loop, and Shift Command P for punch. Here's a cool one. Say you're in a tracking session and you have a very nice drum balance down here and you want to send it to the drummer. Or say you're doing parallel processing and you want to use the tricks we showed you in the parallel processing video. All you have to do is select all your tracks and then hit Option Command H and it will let you copy that mix to that aux. So send A, say the current value, the volume, OK. Boom, now my mix is up here. That's nice. These were the Pro Tools key command we use most. You may have some different ones because they're not all in the manual. If we miss some, do write to us. Until then, et voilà.